Welcome to the sixth tutorial in my beginner's series on Oculus Quest 2 development. If you have been following this tutorial series from the start, you should now have your Quest 2 and PC ready for VR development, and Unity should also be installed. If not, you will need to complete the steps outlined in the previous tutorials, before you can continue with this one. You can find a link to the tutorial series playlist in the description below. Ok, assuming that's all done, let's continue. Our aim is to create a Unity project, containing a simple VR scene, which we will deploy to your Oculus Quest. The first step is to create a new Unity project. We will need to launch the Unity Hub for this, let's do that now. Click the New Projects button. Before we create our new project, take a look at the Location text box in the bottom right. This is the folder in which your Unity project will be saved. Make sure you save your Unity projects on a hard drive with plenty of space. They can get pretty big, particularly once you start using a lot of art and audio assets. Now click the Project Name text box and give your project a name. You can now select an editor version from the drop down menu at the top of the window. I would suggest using the latest 2021 version. In fact, this should be the editor version that you installed in the previous tutorial. Directly below this you should see a list of project templates that you can choose from. For Oculus Quest projects I would recommend selecting the 3D URP template. Since it's the first time that we wish to use this template, we will need to download it. Click the Download Template button on the right. So what does URP mean? URP stands for Universal Render Pipeline. And what is a render pipeline you ask? A render pipeline is simply a series of steps or calculations that the graphics system needs to perform every time it wants to render a 3D scene to a 2D screen. Currently, Unity offers three types of render pipeline. The default is the built-in render pipeline, which, not so long ago, was the only option available. It's reliable, works well across a range of devices, but is rather inflexible. The other two render pipelines are more recent additions to the Unity engine. They are the Universal Render Pipeline and the High Definition Render Pipeline, or HDRP for short. Both of these are categorised as scriptable render pipelines, as they are flexible and open to being altered by the developer. The High Definition Render Pipeline is designed for projects that target high performance hardware and require the maximum graphical fidelity for example AAA games on high-end consoles. The Universal Render Pipeline is recommended for less capable hardware, or when the most taxing graphical effects are not required. URP is certainly recommended for development on the Quest. Anyway, a discussion of render pipelines is best left for another video. Let's get back to the Unity Hub. Ok, we are pretty much finished here. All that remains is for us to click the Create Projects button. Do that now. The Unity Editor will start to load. Since this usually takes some time, let's take the opportunity to connect your Quest headset to your PC via a USB cable. And let's also turn on the headset. OK, the editor has now loaded and has opened with our new project. The first thing we need to do is set our target platform to Android. This is because the Quest is, itself, an Android device. In the top menu, go to File and then Build Settings. In the Build Settings window, go to the Platform list on the left and click on Android. Click the Switch Platform button. This will trigger a re-import of all your project's assets so that they are in a format suitable for the Android platform. The conversion to the Android platform is now complete. You may get a warning message stating that there is an incompatibility between the colour space and the current player settings. We will fix this problem in the player settings window, where we will also do some further configuration required for quest development. In the build settings window, click the player settings button. The Project Settings window will appear. The Player section should be selected in the left sidebar. 
check that the Android Settings tab is selected. Under Android Settings, expand the Other Settings section. Under Rendering, make sure the color space is set to linear. In the Graphics API list, make sure only OpenGLES 3 is present. Delete any other APIs. I am deleting the OpenGLES 2 API here, as it is causing the linear color space warning. Next, we need to install a plugin that enables us to configure our project specifically for Oculus Quest development. From the sidebar of the project settings window, select XR Plugin Management. Click Install XR Plugin Management. Once the XR Plugin Management system has finished installing, make sure the Android Settings tab is selected. Now tick the Oculus checkbox. This will install the Oculus plugin. Next select the Windows tab and tick the Oculus checkbox here also. The Windows plugin will allow you to test your VR creations from the Unity editor with your headset connected to your PC. OK, now close both the project settings and build settings windows. Next we want to set up a VR scene so that we have something to look at when we run our app on the headset. You should see a panel in the bottom left of the Unity editor called Project. This shows our project's folder structure as a hierarchical list. One of the root folders in this list is called Assets. And it's this folder in which you will place your app's asset source files, such as 3D models, audio clips and images. Make sure the Assets folder is expanded and you will notice it contains a folder called Scenes. You will notice that the Scenes folder currently only contains one scene called Sample Scene. Double click it to make sure it is open in the Scene View. Incidentally, the Scene View is the central viewport in the editor. So what is a Unity Scene? Very briefly, a Scene file contains a collection of assets arranged in 3D space. They define 3D environments. Typically, scenes contain cameras, lights and 3D entities, which would include scenery, characters and interactive objects. A Unity scene could be used to define a specific level or area in a video game, for example. Anyway, back to our sample scene. To the left of the scene view, you will notice a scene hierarchy panel. The hierarchy panel lists every object in the scene as a hierarchical tree. You will notice the scene currently contains a camera, a light and something called a global volume. Notice that when you select a label in the hierarchy, the relevant object becomes highlighted in the scene view and vice versa. FYI, Unity refers to objects placed in the scene as game objects. Anyway, let's select the global volume from the hierarchy and press delete to remove it. The global volume plays a role in post-processing, which is something I don't want to get into right now. Let's keep things simple. One thing we do need to do, however, is convert our scene's main camera into a camera suitable for VR. To do this, go to the top menu bar and select Game Object. Then go to the XR submenu and click on Convert Main Camera to XR Rig. Look at the hierarchy panel and you will see that the main camera has indeed been converted to a game object called XR Rig. By the way, the main camera does still exist. It's now just buried two layers deep inside the XR Rig structure. Expand the XR Rig in the hierarchy and you will see it. In a Unity scene, it's actually very common to have game objects nested within other game objects like this. The main camera is a child game object of the camera offset, and the camera offset is, in turn, a child of XR Rig. Now, click on Main Camera. Take note of the panel on the right of the scene view. This is the Inspector panel. The Inspector panel reveals all the components that the currently selected game object is comprised of. Components often expose certain properties that influence the game object's behaviour. These properties are often editable through the Inspector. Here you can change the field of view of the camera component for example. Also, notice the first component listed in the Inspector, the Transform component. It displays and allows you to edit the position, rotation and scale of a game object. 
Every game object in the scene will have a transform component at the very least. Alright, let us now place a simple 3D object within our scene so that we actually have something to look at. In the top menu bar, click on Game Object, go to the 3D Object sub-menu and select Capsule. A grey 3D object called Capsule will appear in your scene view. Make sure the capsule remains selected. I'm using the mouse scroll wheel here to zoom in on the capsule in the scene view. I want to make the capsule larger so that it will be more prominent in our VR scene. One way to do this is to type the scaling factors in manually in the inspector panel. Go to the transform component and alongside scale you will notice three input boxes, one for each axis. I'm scaling each axis by a factor of three here. Ok, we now have a 3D object in our scene which we will be able to see when we run our app. Press Ctrl S to save the scene. Before we build our VR project as a standalone app for Quest, let's test it out via the Unity editor. It's actually possible to view your Unity scene directly through your headset, providing it is connected to your PC via USB. However, you will need to put your Quest headset into Oculus Link mode first. Make sure your Quest is connected and turned on. Put on your headset. You should see the Oculus Home menu bar. Select Quick Settings which is the leftmost button on the menu bar. The Settings panel will appear. Select the Oculus Link button. The Oculus app will launch on your PC and your headset will link to it. The user interface in your Quest will change accordingly. OK, you can take off your headset now and return to the Unity Editor. We are now ready to test our scene from the Unity Editor. Unity makes this very simple. All you need to do is hit the play button in the top toolbar. After a brief moment, Unity will enter what is referred to as play mode. Unity will now be playing your app in the central viewport, closely approximating what you would experience had you created an actual build of your project. Notice that the scene view has been replaced by the game view in the central viewport. Anyhow, if you put the headset back on now, you will see the 3D capsule in all its VR glory. Once you have finished viewing your scene, take off the headset and hit the play button again in the Unity editor. This will make the editor exit out of play mode and you will be returned to the scene view. Now that we have tested our app and we have found no errors or issues, we are ready to create a real build. This build will produce an APK which will run the app standalone on your Quest headset. Before we can build to your Quest, we will need to disable Oculus Link in the headset. To do this, put on the headset and click on the headset icon in the far left of the main menu bar. A panel will appear giving you the option to disable Oculus Link. Click on the disable button. You should be promptly returned to the Quest 2 home menu. Now remove your headset and return to the Unity Editor. In the Unity Editor, go to the top menu bar, click File and select Build Settings. The Build Settings window should open. In the top part of the Build Settings window, there is a list of scenes to be included in the build. We have made our changes to the sample scene and this scene should already be included. If not, then simply click the Add Open Scenes button to add it to the list. Next. Click on the Run Device drop-down menu. If your Quest is connected and switched on, then it should be listed as an option in this menu. Select it. You are now ready to build and deploy your app to your Quest headset. Click the Build and Run button. You will need to enter a name for your APK file and the folder in which it is to be saved. I like to create a build folder within each project, to which I save all my APKs, but feel free to save it where you want. Type in a file name and click the save button. The build process should now begin. This may take some time, particularly if you have a large project. Once the build is complete, the APK will be saved to your specified folder and from there it will also be copied to your headset. The build process is now complete. Put your headset back on. You will notice that your app has been launched automatically and is now running in your headset. If you wish to relaunch your app in your headset later, 
Remember that it can be found under apps and unknown sources in the quest home menu. And that's it, we have reached the end of this tutorial series. You have managed to deploy your first VR app to your Oculus Quest. This series was only meant to be a starting point however. We have not touched upon interaction, asset creation, animation or game logic for instance. I plan to produce further videos that dive into these and other areas of VR development. So please subscribe if that's of interest to you. I would also recommend that you look at some tutorials covering the basics of working with Unity. I'll put some links in the description. Good luck and happy questing!